what's going on y'all my name is damien and on this youtube channel i basically talk about all things cloud security devsecops and i also offer career advice within those two areas or in the domain of cyber security as a whole and in today's video i'm basically going to be showing you guys my cloud security slash devsecops resume and i will also be giving you guys tips and tricks on how to create your own resumes as well so without further ado let's just get straight into it okay so just to level set i've been in the tech industry for um well over six years now but within the cybersecurity space for about six years or so so a lot of the experience that you're going to see on my resume is really just going to be like my experience with you know various different or really my experience across like the amount of time that i've been in this industry so this is an example that i'm showing you of the application resume that I have. This is probably the shortest resume that I have out of all the ones that I do have. And in this video, I'm basically going to show you two types of resumes. So just to kind of give you an idea, if you take a look here, my resume is literally formatted. Um, and when I started out in my career, I literally was one of those people who went to live career and bought a template. And I've been using that template ever since. And it has worked for me, it has gotten me interviews and has gotten me past, you know, go. And in certain cases, I have been able to collect $200. So I would say that, you know, do what's best for you, do what works for you, but always make sure that number one, your resume is a Word document or a PDF. And number two, try to make sure that it is ATS friendly. ATS is mostly what these companies used to be able to parse your resume and extract it and ensure that it like it aligns with the role that you know you're applying to and ensuring that that's what they're looking for you are what they're looking for in your experience so in my particular case what i've done here is you can see at the very top you can ha you have your email and you know you have your github link or whatever have you any type of like you know content creation whether it be your medium blog or whatever you want to make sure you put that up there at the top your phone number and then of course i say in the clouds because that's exactly what my address is because i stay in the clouds but you want to make sure you put like your address and your location there as well most people say that you don't necessarily need to include a summary i've always included a summary in mine it was one of the key pieces of feedback that I've gotten within my resume. Some folks have actually appreciated that I created a summary that basically explained, you know, my experience before they dive deeply into it. I also would argue that if you also include a summary, I don't think there's really much of a need for a cover letter, but it just depends on the role and what it is that you really, which what it is that, you know, they're really looking for and how much effort you're willing to put into applying for a role. So, that's one thing you can include it or not include it. But if it were me, I just, I keep a summary in my resumes just because that's just something that has worked for me, right? Following that, like you have the skill section. So my skill section, I just basically list out like all the various different cloud services I work with, CICD platforms, vulnerability scanning, containerization, you name it, I put it in here. But a lot of the things that I've put in here, I actually have experience with. So if there's any type of things that people will call out, like if they will call out like, oh, you put SQL in your resume, what is your experience with that? I can speak to it because that's something I've done in the past. So don't throw skills on your resume that you can't speak to in an interview because anything on your resume is fair game. Just throwing it out there. And, you know, I'll always say you would want to definitely put your skills at the top and make sure it's summarized. And that way, you know, your recruiter will be able to kind of go through and like look at your resume and pick out those skills and things that you've already done. Following the skills section would be your experience. So in this particular case, you know, I have a list of experiences from various different companies that I've worked with. I've also kept, and every time I've gotten promoted, I also make sure that I include that as like a new experience because you're technically starting a new role or a new job at those companies. So I have company B, and company A. And, you know, there's a bit of bold here in this resume. And the reason why I've emboldened things because I believe that it makes it a little bit easier um, for the recruiter to kind of like spot what it is that you've done as someone who's interviewed and also interviewed people, as someone who reviews the resumes 
I also think that I've seen a couple of resumes that have come across to me where they've emboldened some of the words. And I think that really helped the candidate stand out a little bit. So I definitely took that upon myself to kind of add those capabilities and features into my resume as well. So definitely include, embolden some things, make some things stand out, especially if it's tailored specifically to the role that you're applying for. And then inside of your resume, you know, make sure you try to keep things clean, clear, and concise, and also add in metrics, right? And metrics really help them understand the impact that you've had. Like, for example, I say like, oh, I refactored 50 plus I enrolled to enforce least privilege and with that reducing access risk and improving overall cloud security. That's impact. So you want to make sure that you include those things into your resume and include those metrics. And if you want to embolden them to make those stand out, definitely do it. So when you have this experience, and I'm just going to kind of scroll down. I've also included open source contributions and I've only included like one liners, but these are essentially like some of my community contributions that I've done over the, in the past. This is something that I would say if you have like a project section when you want to highlight like side projects, you can definitely put those in there. But if your resume gets too long, then I would say that would be the first thing to take out. Certifications, I put towards the bottom with education and then affiliations. These are just like any groups that I'm a part of. Some people want to see them. Some people don't. But ultimately, I just keep those at the very bottom to let the recruiter know that I am act also active within the community, in the tech community, and to also let them know, you know, like I don't just go go do my work and go home. I do, you know, do a lot of upskilling and studying and stuff outside of work. And I think a lot of people value that. When it comes down to length of your resume, there's a couple of things that I really want to touch on. You can see that the length of my resume is literally three pages. And I think that, you know, as a senior in my career, it's acceptable because there's so much experience that you have that you want to make sure like you try to squeeze into and fit into your your resume. So no more than three for a senior, I think is fine. Anything over that is overkill for anyone in junior or mid-level roles or let them say entry level roles. Your resume should be no more than a page. Anyone who's coming in as like, you know, trying to go from junior to mid-level or mid-level to senior level then no more than two pages i think that is an acceptable amount um, and it allows you to kind of like pack your experience in there all right so this is an example of a running resume now the question you're probably asking yourself is why even have a running resume in the first place and the reason why you should is because um, you're gonna forget things that you've done in the past at your previous organizations and you want to make sure that you're actually like documenting all that good work that you've done no matter what it is and you want to have one key template where you're keeping track of those changes so that you can use that information to help craft your child resumes that you're going to be using to apply for new roles so if you take a look at this example running resume that i have like i said this is an example and right now you can see like this one is like four pages long at the very bottom over here and you know i still have the summary the skills the professional experience section all the se sections that i've presented to you in the previous resume i have in this one and the key differences is that number one the experience bullet points are going to vary in size especially if i'm doing multiple different things at different organizations i'm adding in all those metrics and stuff like that so all that information is essentially the same it just may be worded a little bit differently to fit the job description that i'm applying to in the other resumes all right so note that down and the next thing is that you can see like the open source contributions if you remember in the last resume it was literally just like a bullet point of what it is that i've done but in here i'm actually expanding upon it in a lot more detail just so that I can remember what it is that I've done in the past and how much value that I've added. You can see this is new, but this is essentially professional appearances. So, you know, every time I give a talk, I make sure I put that down in my resume. You never know when I'm going to need it or when I need to reference it. So I always want to make sure that I put that in there. One day you may want to apply for a leadership type of role where you may end up having to present at conferences. So you may end up having to add something 
like professional appearances in your resume just so that you can see that you have that skill set to be able to communicate and stuff. Certifications, I always keep those in there. Education and also affiliations, I keep those in there as well. So just some nuggets for y'all. I always recommend keeping one resume just as a running log and then, again, creating those child resumes. And I'll leave y'all with that. And that wraps up this video, y'all. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you were able to gain some valuable insights on how to create your resumes and also what a cloud security slash desktop ops resume would look like. As an example from someone who's a senior in the field, if you found it helpful and you like this content, please make sure you like, subscribe, and also share with your friends. Again, thank y'all so much for supporting the channel and watching this video. I really appreciate you all, and I can't wait to see y'all in the next one. Later.